Good morning, folks. As correctly reported by Dr. Tony Phillips, the CME struck Earth's magnetic field yesterday at 1800 UTC. This was a full day earlier than expected, unless you are an observer. Since eruption day, we've identified that exact time period as the likely impact time due to lower heliospheric densities than the experts were using in their models. The CME was hot, quick, but only moderately dense and with virtually no density to the bow shock out ahead of the wave. Densities such as these, while not super high, can still cause geomagnetic storms, and indeed we're up to a KP of 6 here this morning, a level 2 storm. However, there is evidence that this storm is a little bit worse than that. When using the Karuna data, we see a powerful disruption. Their preliminary K index shows a level 3 event, and... Their Q index shows a level 4 event, a tremendous disruption. Eyes open for airline, transformer, power grid, and other electrical issues today. Looking back at the last 24 hours of our star, we see a relatively calm one. We've got bright sunspots left and right. We can see the southern edge of that coronal hole up north, which we'll come back to. The only activity appears to be on the incoming limb down south. These spots are active now but we'll get to see how the Earth-facing quiet effect rebounds with this group. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find only some minor solar flares, all from the incoming southern region. The sunspot situation is about as advertised yesterday with decay departing, and spots just coming in now. The northern group hasn't shown much activity, but the south is another story. We'll analyze magnetism tomorrow. So folks, Normally, geomagnetic storms depress seismic disruptions, but this coronal hole didn't seem to care. At its most Earth-directed moment, the Earth began to shake, first in northern South America, and then a bigger one in Chile, 6.8. Folks, there had been some discussion of outgoing long-wave radiation anomalies here the last few days, and forecasters I talked to say that China, Japan, and Sumatra are showing similar signals. Top news today is that U.S. climate report for October has been released. We see maximum temperatures here, record high out west, slightly below average in the east. The minimum temperatures show that the lowest temps are not going down as much as normal. Then, looking back over the last year, we see that despite the El Nino heat, we are still a nice mix of hot and cold for the last 12 months. It is Saturday, so we'll have a new episode of Fly on the Wall here in a few hours over at suspiciousobservers.org. We'll be discussing why the experts got the CME arrival time wrong, climate censorship, and a fascinating hypothetical. Top weather stories include the Indian cyclone still tracking westward. Then, over in the United States, we are seeing high pressure move in from the west and driving away the clouds and rain before the next system crests from the Pacific. In Europe... The low pressure cell cuts across the land as you see here. Now watch the storm line. Down under, we've got more low pressure cells hogging the atmospheric moisture flows and dropping the storms. After this, we've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe everyone.